Woohoo! Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Welcome to Opening the Bedroom Doors. My name is Jesse Fresh. This is Juliet, and we're going to first start by listening to something a little different. Usually we start with like a little boogie. And uh, since it's early on, on my time, uh, we decided that we would have some more meditative music. So take a moment to get settled in your space, um, grab a nice drink, whatever it is that you need, and maybe take this moment to turn inward. I'm definitely going to try and collect my, my brain. <laughs> Just imagine you're at a spa if you feel like it. Thank you for joining me in that. <laughs> if you haven't already, take a nice deep stretch. Do anything else you need before you open your eyes. Ah, nice. Great. Well, welcome to opening the bedroom doors. This is all, this episode is focused on having better sex as you age. This uh, interview series is all about the things that we never talk about in our sex lives uh, that we could share. And so I, invite sex experts, um, friends, colleagues that I've gotten to know that are experts in many different areas. And we open the conversation around very specific titillating things so that you can open your mind, so I can open my, my mind, um, and we can have more possibility in our eroticism because of that. Because we know that other people are doing it, that we give ourselves permission for trying these things, and we're introduced to new topics that we never really thought of. Um, as a private coach, like I do things like this and teach online workshops and um, in my private practice, I often hear people talk about that they don't try things or they don't know what other people are doing, therefore they don't even know what exists. So I thought that we needed to start busting these myths of um, what's happening behind closed doors. So today we have Juliet, and Juliet and I are both certified erotic blueprint coaches, and that's how we met. I remember the moment I saw Juliet in our training space and thought, who is that powerful person? Uh, Juliet just had such a strong presence that I was automatically magnetized to her and um, from then on, got to learn all the different dynamicness of Juliet. Um, yeah, I'll leave that mystery for you to find out. <laughs> um, so, Juliet, would you introduce yourself and tell, tell people what it is that who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name is. Uh, thank you for that introduction. I'm kind of like, yeah. oh, yeah, I yeah. a lot. right. <laughs> my name is Juliet Caraman Van Schardenberg. It's 
bit of a mouthful, so just do the caravan. Um, I'm Dutch. I live in England. I've lived in, in London for 20 years, but I've just moved um, out to the country recently to the nature, to just be a bit closer yeah. to nature. I think um, as we age, we kind of like realize that we want to be a bit closer and out of the, the rat race. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a mother of four, yeah, for I would say late teens, early 20 kids. Um, and I'm divorced from my husband, have a beautiful partner. Um, but how I really got into this is, I mean, and, and what I do is I coach women and couples. Um, and it's mostly people in their midlife. It's people that are in long-term relationships that have all of a sudden, especially the woman, feel like their role has changed. They don't know, quite know their identity anymore. You know, the, the kids are gone, they're at university, they're working, and it's all of a sudden, everything that they've done for the past 20 years just falls away. Uh, the relationship with the husband has always been about talking about the children, about the house, about the holidays they're gonna take, but it hasn't been that intimate that, uh, you know, the, the, talking about their dreams and all the things, you know, so they look back at their wedding pictures and are like, oh, where, where did we go? Yeah. So those are the people that I help. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm in menopause or actually I'm post-menopause. Um, I had the Mirena coil, so, so I didn't actually notice the menopause so much until I took it out and I was like, whoa, what hit me? <laughs> Holy crap. <Yeah. laughs> So I completely understand what it's like that all of a sudden you're like, whoa, my body's changing. I've got up, you know, up and down, up and down. And it's like, you know, am I even attractive? Do I even know what I want? Mm. So those are the people I help. I do online courses. I do one-on-one -on -one work and I do VIP work. Mm. Um, I've, I've really delved deep into the realm of BDSM, of um, shamanism, uh, I'm an AE assistant trainer, so I really help up level a lot of other coaches to learn all these different methodologies to really to use to have a, an extensive toolkit, so that with every client you have something that you can pull out. Mm -hmm. Read a loss for hey, you know what can I use now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. If you're joining us, um, you can type in the chat and, and we can see your questions and comments. So please interact with us so we know who's here, um, how you're feeling about the topic and so forth. And um, anytime that you feel like you totally connect with something, you can like give us a thumbs up or a heart or some kind of emoji. Now, this um, conversation was brought on by one of my clients who was feeling like their sex appeal was was starting to waver because of them getting older. And um, I see this client as like a total knockout. And so it was really difficult for me to hear that they um, were struggling in that space. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is a conversation that all of us have with ourselves, whether we beat ourselves up about it um, whether we subscribe to the messages of what sex is later on in life um, and just noticing where we're, we're not given the tools to deal with our life changing. It's kind of like, I think of it like reverse, reverse puberty, um, but in a really slow way. And in puberty, you're having a rapid growth in all different changes of your body. And it's a really difficult period. Um, and so, yeah, I would love to know Juliet, like, what it means for you um, in terms of like having better sex as you age? Like what is it and what isn't it? Well, I think definitely it is. There starts to be um, a real acceptance at one point. You know, you go through that point where you're like, fuck, I don't like my body. I don't <laughs> like the way it's changing. I've got this big, you know, big belly and it doesn't, you know, my clothes don't fit anymore. And you start becoming really self-conscious. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, once you delve into what actually turns you on mm -hmm. and how to, you know, how to touch yourself or how to, you know, just tease yourself just off the yeah. skin, you know, to start feeling into what do I like? Mm -hmm. And then when you're a bit older, it's much 
easier what well, once you get over the initial shock <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> ask for what you want right or being able to ask for what you want because that's that's the biggest thing i like no no i can't ask people what to do so mm -hmm. i have my, my clients do a tea exercise i have the the woman ask if it's a if it's a nor, nor, you know if it's a heterosexual um, mm -hmm. couple i mm -hmm. have the the woman ask the man make me a cup of tea and if it's in person i actually have the whole class do it and oh. i'll have a tea station with different kind of mugs different kind of cups different kind of teas water, milk, lemon, sugar, whatever, you know, the whole thing, honey. And I asked them to be really specific mm. in what they want. Then partner B goes and makes a tea. Partner A goes and receives it. And this is where we usually, as if I say woman, we usually um, just take it and anything is good. You're like, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. But I'm like, no, taste it. Mm. Is that exactly how you want it? Is it in the kind of cup that you want? So it's really specific. And if not, can you, you know, do a little shit sandwich? Can you say, lovely for you for, for making it for me? And I'd like this and this and adjust them. So really, how can you set your partner up for success? Mm. By doing this tea exercise, it then makes it much easier in the bedroom to ask for what they want. Mm. If they can do that in normal life, then they start, you know, start building that muscle and the, that neural pathway of actually asking for what they want. And mm. for me, honestly, I mean, I have better sex now than I've had in, in years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really for me, I think it's the last seven or eight years where I've delved deep into sensuality, sexuality, and actually took away all the layers of conditioning because mm. we're really stuck in that conditioning. It's like, oh, after you've had babies, you know, like, like, Kids, parents with 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 kids, it's like oh, you're not supposed to have sex. Kids can't, you know, not supposed to hear it. Then what what kind of condition did you hear from your religion, from your school, mm -hmm. from your parents? And mm -hmm. once you start peeling away those layers, and knowing that pleasure isn't only sex, mm -hmm. but you can have pleasure in just you know the way like. <laughs> metal stroking your hand I mean it's not sexual but it feels really good or the way that you know I don't know you have like a pillow you start touching it <laughs> all, you using all your senses and then all of a sudden it's like your body is just vibrating and what's more and you open up and open up and open up and that's when you can have the most incredible intimate time with yourself and with your partner mm, I'm I'm hearing you bring up a point that it's um, a rediscovery that I think we're, to, we're told that, or I had the idea that the way that I have had sex in the past is the way that it will always look or it will always be, which when it didn't look that way, I thought that I was failing or I thought that I was not um, doing it correctly. Uh, and therefore that just meant less interaction, less discovery, less curiosity or optimism around it. So I hear that as we shift through the many different like life stages of maybe having children, maybe like a different um, rite of passage in your life, different age ranges, that it's a time to be curious about what it is that you want now, not what it looked like before, um, not what you think it should look like, but what it looks like authentically right now. Absolutely. And I think that's what it is. People cling on to it's like, oh, but it used to be so good. I want to go back there. Mm -hmm. But you know, both your bodies have changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you might not be as flexible as before anymore. And <laughs> you might have, you know, been turned on. And also like, like, let's talk about menopause, you know, you don't, you're a bit drier. So you might need some, some lubricant. Yeah. Um, you know, what are those hot flushes doing to your body? What's what's happening there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me at night it was a it was a nightmare, like off on, you know, cover on and off. Alex <laughs> and was like, what's going on? Yeah. Until I actually discovered this cooling mat that I have under under my sheet now. And it's like I sleep Ooh, like nice. a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but we to start talking about this and actually also admitting saying hey listen these hot flashes are driving me crazy i would love to be intimate and can we do it in a different way can we experiment a little bit can we just have touch or breath together can we do it near the freezer <laughs> <laughs> on the cold marble you know on the cold <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah <laughs> so i'm hearing a massive I'm island which is interesting for that <laughs> What? Say that again. I said I have this massive island in my kitchen. Kitchen uh. island. 
<laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm getting visuals. Yes. So I also hear in that, um, that hormones are changing. And just like that idea that I brought up of, of it being like a reverse puberty, like getting used to the hormone shifts and changes can increase your sensitivity, increase your need for communication. Um, and maybe that's where I'm curious, Julia, if you've noticed that you are more sensitive with the hormone shift, like in terms of, um, receiving touch or what that has been like for you. I think so. I mean, to be really honest, I mean, I'll just go through my history a bit. I had four kids and then I went on the Morena coil for years. Mm -hmm. So I've had these hormones in my body for years mm -hmm. and it kind of numbed me. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't quite realized how much until I was like, okay, I actually want anything foreign in my body just taken out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I had a big shift in weight <laughs> with that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've also had three deaths in my family, so I've, I've, I emotionally ate a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I also noticed where everything just became more sensitive. You know, I needed lighter and lighter touch and actually mm -hmm. off the body touch more. Mm -hmm. And this is as you discover the the, the blueprints or, or any other way of actually just discovering what kind of touch you like. Um, you start noticing the minutia and really paying attention to what is. At first it feels numb. And if you actually then put your attention on it, it's like, oh, is there expansion? Is there contraction? Is there a difference in temperature there? And you really start noticing and that's that's the only thing that i say just start being curious just mm -hmm. see what comes up for you and then you know and without even going into pleasurable just notice the temperature and then after a while you're like oh yeah i am feeling something it's like oh and if i move a bit more to the left or if i tell him to move a bit more to the right does that increase my pleasure does it not increase it and you start mm -hmm. becoming really a detective of your body and what it's like now mm -hmm. Beautiful. Love that. Uh, this is reminding me, I just, um, before we started this, I thought of all the different clients that I've had who have been like in their seventies or around there that have been so, so dedicated to exploring pleasure. And, um, that brought up the, the concept of like do doing things at different timing, like, because you feel a lot of people feel like they have more energy during different times of the day. Um, I've had clients that have like, they call it a tryst where three weeks out of, or three, three days out of the week, they will both come home from their jobs and they will prepare themselves by relaxing and preparing their bodies. And then they'll have an hour together where they get to do whatever it is that they want while being present with each other and enjoying pleasure. And that can look so many different ways. Um, and that was so inspiring to me that that first they were like, <laughs> do any of the um, ideas that like your, your sex life has to die at a certain age mm -hmm. um, or that your body is changing. Therefore, like sex is off the table, which is totally a fallacy, totally a myth that I want to bust. Um, yeah. because you can enjoy sex until the day you die, however old that is. Absolutely. Yeah. And it might look very different for, for every person. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, of course, when we age, you know, some parts don't work as well anymore. And we don't have to have you know, intercourse, but mm -hmm. we can still have sex in different ways. Yeah. And that's really the bit. I love where they, because I've noticed with Alex and me where we have slightly different schedules. I work with East, with the, with America, with, mm -hmm. with Pacific time quite often. So that means going to bed quite late for me. Yeah. So in the morning, I don't get up at six o'clock like I used to anymore. I try <laughs> Yeah. I've been to get you know four or five hours and he's like very up in the, in the morning and I'm kind of like still awake at night so it's like oh <laughs> where do we find that uh, that balance where do we find a time that works for all of us mm -hmm. and actually what it is also is that you get out of the habit when you're with someone for so long mm -hmm. you get out of the habit of actually having time together mm -hmm. that we're not speaking about the kids that we're not speaking about the house but that we're focusing on each other mm -hmm. so um so there's definitely a whole bunch of of tips to do uh, and to plan it get mm -hmm. out your phone get out your diary and plan it 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you don't use it, you lose it. Not quite. <laughs> okay. but, you know, I kind of like using just a little bit. It's like, you know, just just do it and, and just actually um, do some do some questions, do some 40 minutes or, or 30 minutes of one prompt and you mm-hmm. go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Then after you do that, then mm-hmm. it's kind of inevitable that you're going to wind up naked or <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, if you have any questions, you can type those in the chat as well, and we will answer those. Um, I saw that one of the questions in the chat was already answered of how long this interview is. Usually they're about an hour. Um, so Juliet, can you, um, I want to touch on some of the advice you would give to people who are wanting to either reclaim their sexuality at whatever age they're in, um, or the people that that want yeah that want to reclaim the uh and like reinvigorate their sex life right i mean it's all a journey back to themselves right mm, <laughs> i i just call that this is your journey your intimate journey back to you to mm. fully feeling. you know my my company is called feel fully you and it's really what i mean with that is is to use all your elements to use your senses but mm. to have any images any thoughts, any emotions, all of those things to rise to the surface, any thoughts, mm-hmm. any body sensations, have all of those come up because mm-hmm. so often we just clamp down on them. Mm-hmm. We think that they're either wrong or I shouldn't act like this or you know, mm-hmm. it, it shouldn't be like this. Like my children, when when I started leading orgasm meditation in London, mm-hmm. they were like, Whoa, mommy, you love your orgasm meditation. <laughs> what the hell you know so it's it's yeah so that kind of like I was like whoa okay maybe I shouldn't be talking about that and then you realize that so many women act and men as well they actually need that they need permission and they don't have that in their surrounding Mm -hmm. so I think reach out for help I mean there are low I mean you and I are both coaches but there are so many coaches out there and you'll see the one that fits best with you mm-hmm. uh, there are so many things online that you can do I would really see without trying to change your outside first start mm-hmm. changing your inside so go inside mm-hmm. um, you know focus on the breath and really realize where is your nervous system at is it like oh so really um slow that down, do some deep Mm. breathing, and then explore with touch, with Mm. movement, with sensuality. Mm. Yeah, really, it's like, how can you move your body? What feels good to you? Mm -hmm. Mm. And being deeply open with each other, saying, hey, I've got something vulnerable to say to you. I'd love to connect, and I don't know how. Mm -hmm. And then also, because men try to fix us right this is they they love helping us and sometimes as a, as or as me being in, in a you know man woman couple I'm, I'm like you know i don't want to be fixed i don't want to be rescued i just want to be heard mm-hmm. i just want to tell you that hey this is coming up for me uh i don't need you to fix me but i want you to hear me that you know i'd love to have more sex or i'd love to do this and that Mm. And so often we immediately go to like, how are we going to fix it? It's like, no, just bring it out. Mm-hmm. Mm, you, b- beautiful. You're touching on like the playfulness that gets to happen when you mentally are unsubscribing from all of your different thoughts and worries and projections and the shoulds that you put on yourself. Yeah. I love that. Um, there was one client of mine who was willing and ready to sign off on their sexuality because they said, I no longer um, get hard. I no longer get wet. Like this is just like my genitals just aren't doing the thing that I think they should be doing. Um, And what actually needed to happen was they needed to find out what really turned them on um, because what they had been doing was not turning them on. So what we worked on was exploring their pleasure in many different ways um, and them Mm -hmm. doing self exploration and really not pressuring themselves to show up in any kind of way or get anywhere with any expectations. And it was such a joyous moment for them to come back and go, Oh my gosh, 
right? Not dead. <laughs> um, that part of my body is not dead. It's very much alive. It is plump. It is wet. It is thriving. Um, and, and yeah, redefining what your pleasure is and being able to discover it. Um, is super important. Absolutely. And I think often, uh, you know, we turn to porn and mm -hmm. it's more stimulation, more this, more that, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I tell the story of the fire men and you know, people are like, what are you talking about? It's like, well, you're having sex with your partner. And all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's just, you're going into your head. It's not so exciting anymore. So mm -hmm. you think of him with a fireman's outfit. <laughs> Oh, this is exciting. And then you share it with him. It's like, oh, that was pretty cool. So he goes and puts the fire hat on. Yeah, fireman's hat on. It's like, yeah, it's like, whoa, best sex ever, this, that. And the next time it's it's good, but you know, it goes down a little bit more. Uh -huh. Then the third time it's like, okay, let me wear the 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 jacket as well. And you just see that you have to have extra and extra. And what I try to actually teach them is like, let's take all those extras away. And let's really focus on how light of a touch mm -hmm. do you like? And for some people, they're very energetic. So they're like, whoa, it's been so hard, all the stuff that I've had, that it just turns me off, that it's, it's just completely numbed me. Mm. And it's kind of like I, I see it as a de-thawing process where we mm -hmm. actually de-thaw ourselves and that we allow all those emotions and body sensations to come up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and take off all the pressure. Like we don't have to get anywhere. If we mm -hmm. get penetration, fine. If we touch each other, fine. If we just look at each other, breathe and be in each other's presence or ask questions about the other, you know, yes, you've lived with them for, for 20 years or 18 years or however long. But one, one of the exercises I do is I get them to make a list of things that they love. Mm -hmm. And then on their date day or whatever you call it as well, come and read those to each other and they'll mm. be things that they don't know about each other mm. i love that i also want to talk to the people that are single that um that are feeling connected to this that you could easily do that exercise that juliet just said um and and make a list of all the things that you would like to try that are pleasurable and like create and put aside that time to explore absolutely uh. yeah Love that. Someone said, have you found that, um, have you found men to be as interested and willing to delve deeply and slowly into the details of sensation, et cetera, as well as the women? I actually think that they are so willing. And often when, when you slow down enough with them or when, you know, there are so many men out there that are super sensitive, but mm -hmm. that have been conditioned, like, no, we need to be macho and we need to do this, this and that way, because otherwise, you know, I'm not a man. And when that opens up, when, when all those things drop away where they don't have to perform anymore, mm -hmm. they're super sensitive and really energetic. And I, I've seen people have kundalini orgasms just you know walking past someone else i'm like whoa <laughs> will you describe what a kundalini orgasm is for people that are like what wait what huh yeah. so it's really energetic so it's basically these waves that go up your whole spine and your whole body just feels like it's trembling and it's going through you and you're like where did that come from <laughs> you know? and it's it's just this this incredible chi this incredible life force just mm -hmm. running through you Oop, lost that one <laughs> <laughs> and um and basically at any moment you can just almost go into spasm so mm -hmm. for some people that is highly uncomfortable <laughs> because they didn't realize that that they could even have this, mm -hmm. uh, that they could even just be near a sound and it will, will you know, their whole body will reverberate like that. Mm -hmm. So yes, men definitely are as into deeping, delving into this. And I think where also men have thought of oh, hard and fast and quick is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then once that gets peeled away, they're like, oh, slow is actually exquisite. <laughs> yearning also that they're not getting touched the yearning for it where we live in a world where everything is instant gratification you know we want something we buy it online and it arrives the next day or you know two days later we want something we go out and buy it but if you look back at like 
40, 50 years ago, people would ask for something and they'd have to wait for Christmas or they'd have to wait for their birthday or they'd have to wait until they actually made enough money to buy. They couldn't buy on credit. And that yearning is actually really delicious where you want something and you want it so badly. And the funny thing is then when it's near, when it's time to get it, it's like, oh, do I really still want it? That the, the funny thing about desire, right? <laughs> mm. Yeah, you're, you're also touching on on taking the emphasis off of like genital performance. That that mm -hmm. sex can play means that like your finger can be your genitals, or crevices like in your in your elbow fold then become your genitals, where you are playing um, with yeah. genitals that are all over your body, different erogenous zones, the the first and second like areas of um, the highest nerve endings. I think that that also helps with sensation play and like having this emphasis on like needing to have um, like a hard cock when you're older that um, that that's either determined sometimes as like a success or a failure. But when there is delving into sensations that and and exploring pleasure and being able to reach like orgasmic experiences, um, through that way that it totally redefines what sex even is. Yeah. And I think also you, you talked about, you know, like a soft cock and the owners of the soft cocks are often so ashamed and they're like, Oh, you know, I am turned on, but it's just it's not working. Mm -hmm. And then the partner will shame themselves thinking, Oh, I'm not attractive enough mm -hmm. or I'm not sexy enough, or he doesn't fancy me. Is he having an affair or is you know, all these things come up mm -hmm. instead of just saying, Hey, what's going on for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the hey what's going on for you could be construed as criticism so that's also where you then you know say hey you know i just saw what's what's going on for you love it yeah for me it's it doesn't matter either way mm -hmm. yeah, i just want to be with you and uh, i mean god i love soft cock play it's gorgeous <laughs> yum um i wanted to touch on the part that you already described of like accept being in acceptance. And I know that that's quite a journey uh, and it sounds like an easy thing, but I'm curious for, for all of us that are shifting in our age every day um, <laughs> that, that we have some kind of tools to um, help with, with like building acceptance. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that I could think of first was like, when you look in the mirror, we often, think negatively about what our appearance is. And um, a practice that I've had in the past is looking in the mirror and only giving yourself po positive comments um, mm -hmm. or positive compliments so that you are building that, that neural pathway in your brain to pump up and strengthen um, that kind of rapport. And I think of that in terms of body image as well, that when your body is changing and shifting and you're like, oh, this is new, like, what is this? And what is that? Like just noticing all the different things through aging that you're able to still pick out the positive parts of like, oh, but I love the way my ass looks or I love how soft my inner arms are now. Um, picking That's out the things that you really enjoy. So I'm curious, Juliet, like yeah. if Accepting. I do an exercise with my my clients is I let them stand in front of the mirror naked if they can or in underwear or in tight fitting clothes mm. and you know I also do a EFT tapping so mm. I let them just bitch and tap so we use all the pressure points and they just bitch and tap and just like oh my god my saggy thighs and look at them my <laughs> I can flop them over my my shoulder just let it really rant I have them have a timer for five minutes whoa and, and it's you know so often we it's i call it emotional housekeeping we keep all mm. this stuff in and we think them but we don't say them out loud, loud. Mm. And once we've said them out loud and once we've just let that out and you know stomp and f move it through your body mm -hmm. and you feel super drained afterwards <laughs> so the next thing is if they can look at their body every day I have them look and, and say what the things are that they love but what I also have them do is I have them write a letter to their body mm. really emotional and actually write a love letter and it's something like 
dear body, you know, how I've abused you and how I've squeezed you in clothes that were too tight and worn, you know, bras that squash my boobs together or whatever yeah? yeah and I remember doing this the first time and I was just like I was in tears mm -hmm. and I got so much gratitude uh I got so much gratitude from my body I mean I'm just in the process before I came on I was writing a, a meditation that I'm about to record about this about mm -hmm. your body and about actually loving it and sending it loving attention mm -hmm. and little by little your um perception of your body really changes mm -hmm. you know if you can really give your knees a bit of love and maybe place your hands there and just just feel the love that you have for the, your knees i mean they get a lot of abuse from us <laughs> yeah. was, you know and it's just like you have for me the last 52 years you've carried me you've you've been here for me mm -hmm. and this is the thing that we forget that our body and mind are very closely connected. We can't just ignore one. Mm -hmm. And if we don't love our bodies, and if we don't love all parts of ourselves, then it's very difficult to let others love us as well and to really let that love in. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. Right. Being able to uh, receive a compliment and actually take it in rather than just deflect. Yeah. It. Master so deflector I was. <laughs> what, what, say that again? I was a master deflector for years. Yeah. But you know, even at something as simple as like, oh my God, that top looks amazing on you. And you're like, oh yeah, it's just you know, this little thing. It's nothing. It cost me $12, whatever. Instead of just saying, you know, actually letting it land, just saying, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So. I love that you ask your clients to speak out loud, the bitch tap and rant, <laughs> whatever that, yeah. whatever that <laughs> practice is. Um, because often I think that the thoughts that we have when we actually would say them out loud, that we wouldn't recognize how, how negative we've been with ourselves. Like we, we often would never speak out loud the way that we speak to ourselves or, um, and that's, that's depending on what journey you're in. Like now, in the past, before I really learned about this, I was ruminating constantly about all the negative things that were going on in my life. Um, mm -hmm. And that ultimately manifested more negativity. Um, so. And it's like, would you actually be friends with someone that speaks to you the way that you speak to yourself or that treats you that way? <laughs> That's another thing I was writing about earlier today. I'm like, no, the answer is actually no, you would not. Mm -hmm. You cut them out of your life. Mm. So it's really allowing yourself to let it rip you know i i actually say just let it rip <laughs> yeah another one what i did with my shaman is go outside onto the grass and just use your fist and give it back to mother earth you know mm. all the things that have been building up and you, you become like a volcano you just pew i mean we've all had this right we've had an argument with our partner or with someone that we love um and then all of a sudden things that they did five years ago come blurting out of your mouth and you're like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you're never like this and look at this one. All right. You start comparing and it's like, okay, but that's all the stuff that's been building up. Mm -hmm. So once you can let go of that, then it's like, oh, you're in the here and now and you can actually accept everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't have as much charge, you know, it doesn't, then a little remark, the way someone looked at us, it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, I taught a class last night on how to get out of your head and get into the moment um, in sex. And that yeah. was one of the points that I brought up was um, like how to really acknowledge your feelings. If you are stuck in your head during sex and your feelings are just continually circling back, there are some that are just like the monkey mind that's happening. But if there are significant thoughts or feelings that are showing up, it's really important to acknowledge them. Absolutely. But looking yeah. at them and going like, okay, I hear you. Like, what do you want? Thank you. Okay. And it's funny. So I have this um, own practice with, with uh, Alex. We, we are, um, which is, yeah, 15 minute clit stroking. So <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that you're like, yes, we own. Um, it's just a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of my practices, but you know, thoughts come in. And actually what I've started doing is saying them out loud. Mm. And I'll just tell him stop. He's like, 
it's like we just stop and then I'll say, you know, I thought about, you know, is the gas off or what <laughs> the kids doing or, or, you know, or just like, you know, are there, are there flowers or the flowers dying? He's like, <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm like, okay, let's begin again. But what that does is it actually does bring connection. Because you know, otherwise you just stroke that you're, you're, you're like like same as in bed, you know, someone is is fucking you and your head is going all over the place and you're like, oh, can he just finish, you know, just quickly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but most people my age have been there, right? <laughs> and the thing is to say there, it's like, hey, I think it's peaked. Can we mm -hmm. just stop a moment? Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then very often if that movement stops you can then start enjoying it again or mm -hmm. you start asking for you know can we come out and then just do some some touching on the skin or off the skin or can you massage my neck or mm -hmm. can you pull my hair a little bit or whatever comes in or just say hey you know i'm thinking about this and that i need to just say it and then i can become present again <laughs> I'm meditating, right bring it back to the breath here it's like say your thoughts and bring it back to connection Mm. And isn't, uh, just for anyone that's like, what is oming or orgasmic meditation is the practice of having like a regular commitment every day or something like that, um, where you are practicing just being in the moment while there is like clitoris stimulation, right? Yeah. Right. So basically it's, it's like a really tiny stroke. So it's like you're barely touching your eyelid, that light. Mm. And the only thing is the connection is what do you feel? You have upstrokes, which go up. So which most of the time bring the energy back up, back up. Mm -hmm. and then downstrokes if you go too high, because mm -hmm. you, know, you stroke, you overstroke and people get numb. So you start going down again. And the mm -hmm. only thing is actually the aim is connection. What mm -hmm. do you feel in your body? Is there a tingling in your ear? And that's mm -hmm. what you do afterwards. You, you share a frame. So you share like, at this moment, I felt uh, a twitch in my right foot <laughs> or expansion in my chest. And it's it's not about climax. It's not about getting off. And very often, it's just presence. It's like pure mm. presence with each other. Mm. Love that. Someone said, I so mm. identify with that issue. I think maybe they were talking about the, like, being in your head and, and how, to, mm. how to acknowledge it. Great ideas on how to love your body more. This is such a struggle for so many of us, but especially once you're over 50. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's also uh, so much more difficult to, to get things, you know, to do things. Your body shifts. You don't lose weight as easily. You don't, you know, you don't exercise as much or, or as easily because your knees are knackered. Your other bits are just not working as much anymore. So it's like, yeah, acknowledge that and then kind of see, like today, I've, I've I've been suffering with plantar fasciitis. So the, today, yeah. I did lots of like movement and dancing, and then I went on the bed and just moved around and rolled around. It's like okay, it's not hard cardio, but it's it's actually <laughs> being embodied and really feeling that that life chi run through you. I love that you shared with me before we started this. Like, oh, I've had a full day, and I <laughs> when you say that, I would not have necessarily thought like, oh yeah, the full day included like rolling around on the bed and starting with orgasmic meditation and then <laughs> going and having all these meetings. But it's, I love your examples of like, yeah, a full day means that there is pleasure in the beginning. There's pleasure in between. There is embodiment practices. Yum. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really, I think I, I, I love that. And this is how I like, I have little flowers where, and I just have like bundles of joy. I call them my little bundles of joy. Yeah. And it might be a bit of flowers. It might be something from the garden that I picked up, but mm. just have little pieces dotted around your house, your apartment, your mm -hmm. room, just yeah. that when you look at them, they bring you joy. And that then floods your whole body again. And yeah. you know, it might be something like putting a candle on or, or spraying your body with some, some perfume or putting some cream on, just, just kind of see what it is for you. It might be music, it might not be music, it might be complete stillness, turning yeah. your phone and your, your computer off. Mm. Come on with that one. <laughs> Oh, how cute. Listening to you two brings me bundles of joy. Ah! Um, Juliet, do you have any bundles of joy around you? I'm curious if we can like touch on specific bundles of joy in our 
because sometimes I ask like, what sex toys do you have? Ooh. Oh my God. That's not my flowers. That's my whole like altar and thing. That kind of oh, beautiful. There's, uh, there's some sage and stuff there. Um, you know, I like, okay, so I brought out the fork earlier, but I <laughs> yeah. this one. Well, I what's that? That's a ladle. I mean, it's a sweet <laughs> ladle. So you don't need to have any sex toys. <laughs> you can just have, you know, like, touch it around there. Oh, my gosh. Here, this bit is always really sensitive. And then you can use the other side. Ooh, you're you're touching on like temperature play as something that possibly going through different hormonal shifts. Like temperature play can be so fun. Completely, black obsidian is Ooh. one of my favorites. <laughs> so, and that also just holding on to crystals, holding on to uh, yeah, different different metals. Mm. Like, to me, it's like the textures of everything. I have this like little ostrich thing that I'll just go and. You're always, you're always wearing silky shirts as well. Like, I wear silk a lot. I wear silk and satin and, yeah. and just things that feel good on my body. So yeah, that's that's really my sensual coming out. That mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm sitting on on a velvet sofa that I just I just want it to touch. <laughs> I have metal. I have wood. I have all this kind of stuff around me because that's really what brings me joy and just mm -hmm. just seeing the richness of it. Mm -hmm. I used to be an interior decorator, so, so there's Ooh. a bit of that coming out as well. But yeah, I mean, just the the black obsidian, right? Mm. I just got this new fun. um this new shawl that is so soft that as Ooh. we've been doing this interview, I've been like, okay, this is a really great sh like thing to put over a naked body. <laughs> over right, naked the body. color is also that that color of of yellow orange is oh beautiful, it's very fall. Um, feeling yeah. the fall, the fall vibes. Um, is there anything that I usually like, sometimes I ask like what, if people are trying to re-enter this, if they're trying to reclaim their sex at any age, um, what are potential things that could get in the way? Mm -hmm. Want to like give people the hurdles that they can identify so that they know that they're coming up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, first of all, Often we think if one partner is unwilling, mm. then it's never going to happen. Mm. Um, and I would really say it's start with yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because when you change your, your journey to your intimacy, um, mm. the world around you starts changing. So your partner might you know, all of a sudden mm. get interested in stuff. And mm -hmm. anyway, your outlook on, on life is going to be better. Mm -hmm. So um, so this is one thing. First thing is hurdle is like, oh, my partner is not going to want it. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't talk to him or her about this. Mm -hmm. And actually, that is a thing that you you, you build on your confidence. And, and honestly, I think for that, a coach is the best thing because we really hold you. We have that container where people feel like, oh, my God, anything. I can actually bring up all of this stuff. Shame will come up. Mm. Um, yeah, a lot of conditioning. What mm. have you told us about, and right. what are what are we holding on to so unconsciously? Mm -hmm. uh, what what trauma have we had? What intense experiences have we buried? You know, I was talking about this yesterday in a podcast. I was raped by five guys when I was eighteen, mm -hmm. and I buried it for for twenty years. Wow. So it only started coming up, you know, like like quite recently, and it's like. Whoa, okay, no wonder I've never been able to let go in sex as much as mm. I want. Mm. So really, really good boundaries. What, you know, and every time they can change, it's like, what do I want today? What do I accept to do? What, you know, what can we both, um, where can we both feel really safe? I think safety is a really, really big thing to, to yeah. look at. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're going to go into to more impact play and stuff, that's a super one. But already in the beginning, it's like, you know, what do I need? It's mm -hmm. like, I want to talk to you, but I don't want you to fix me. I want, yeah, I, I want to talk to you, but I don't want you to touch me. I want you to witness me. I don't want a device, you know, these kind of things. It's really knowing what is it that you need? What mm -hmm. is it that you want? So all of those things will come up or can come up. They might not. <laughs> um, and also one partner might go much faster than the other. And that brings in shame to both partners. The other one saying, oh, my God, I'm just you know, so sexual uh, or I, I want this. I want to go much faster than, than you know, my partner. And the other partner will feel like I'm, I'm slow. But here it is like 
stay curious and be, you know, be as full and be as real as you can be and talk about these things. Mm -hmm. We don't need to fix anyone. Some Most of the time voicing, voicing what's coming up for you is already enough to be witnessed. Mm -hmm. Empathy, like Brene Brown says, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring it out to the light. Yeah, that um, I was thinking of like for the people that I know that want to listen to this that are single as well, mm -hmm. that that all of those things can show up on your own as well. If you are doing mm -hmm. self-pleasure, um, possible shame, possible conditioning, um, and being able to be really gracious and patient with yourself. Um, in your discovery. And also like the fear of going out there after say being in a, in a sexless marriage and then getting divorced. It's like, what if nothing works anymore? You know, or how do I even meet people? Mm -hmm. What do I want? Mm -hmm. So really it's, it's, it's a time for introspection. Mm. Oh my gosh, you're reminding me. I have one like all-star client right now. Not one, I have many. But this person, when we first started, was um, newly divorced, didn't really know what they wanted or desired. And the idea of dating was really scary. Um, but they knew that they wanted to start dating within the next year. And so we slowly started working on that, on identifying what it is that they need um, to feel turned on. And now they have four um, partners, <laughs> they, like, nothing to like having an entire, th now they're, they've, uh, learned that they're a shapeshifter, um, which in the erotic blueprints means that it's one of the five blueprints where you're turned on by lots of variety and creativity. And so it's very, um, telling that this person has four partners that are all meeting their needs in many different ways. Um, so I want to encourage you as well that there's so much that you can do that you don't have to settle for whatever it is that you're settling for. Um, and if you don't know how to get there, that's where you can reach out for support. Um, you can reach out to me at any point and to Juliet as well um, to, to pick our brain or to get some guidance around that. Um, Juliet, you, you've mentioned so many projects that you have coming up. What you have like a meditation that you're creating. Tell, tell the people like where they can work with you or what, what, what you're doing. Yeah. So my website, so my brand is feel fully you, mm -hmm. which, you know, for me, it's really, it's coming back to feeling all parts of you. Right. Mm -hmm. so that's what I mean. We'll feel for you. Um, so I work one on one with clients. I do uh, three, six or nine month packages, mm -hmm. uh, VIP packages. People fly in from all over the world to see me or they fly mm -hmm. me out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there is a group program. Love your midlife method. I'm thinking I'm actually in the new year. I'm launching a group program for coaches and how to really cool body sexuality and how to go into your dark feminine and how to go into you know, more kink and and how to really allow yourself to be fully you know all of you yeah. um and then i work with couples so it's basically i work with a whole bunch of different ways i'm doing meditations guided meditations they're not yet on my site um, but mm -hmm. they're being worked on at the moment yeah. um yeah and and starting a podcast with so you know that they're all they're <laughs> all in, in the in the coming i'm uh i'm be, i'm speaking on a lot of different things i'm uh helping other coaches up level with accelerated evolution so it's like my plate is a bit full <laughs> <laughs> it's good though i'm really enjoying it uh beautiful amazing yeah. um if anyone has any questions please let us know before we start to close um i recently just created some, um, there are recordings on my website that people can now purchase of past classes. Um, that was up as of last night. It's been a big project that I've been working on so that people can just have automatic downloads of whatever they're wanting to work on in their sex life. So right now I have my mind melting erotic spanking class that's available on demand. Um, and the, uh, sex for the super sensitive and a couple of others as well. So that's some exciting news. Um, and thank you so much, Juliet, for being on this on this call and, and having this conversation. I know that this is such an important um, conversation to open up. Thanks that, for having um, me. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, I would love for us to end by everyone blowing a kiss. I'm curious because the Facebook 
uh, has like a 30 second delay. I just want to make sure that questions aren't coming in um, and we're just like bopping along. <laughs> um, so I'm curious uh, if we could blow everyone a kiss. And I want to try and just encourage us to do the most creative kiss blowing we've done in a long time. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what that looks like, but um, I think I'm, yeah. Okay. Ready? I'm going to blow you a kiss. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Um, someone just asked what my website is. It's jessiefresh.com. Put that information in the chat. Um, and thank you all. We'll be on our next show coming up soon. Um, that's going to be all on psychological kink. So, oh, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful day.